warning continues. He says to the wild olive branches, don't boast. In other words, don't allow pride to creep in on you as well. Don't allow pride to creep on you and boast against the branches that were broken off. And I believe that happens a lot today. I've heard many people, especially in their, in their replacement theology crowd, they are saying, well, Israel no longer has a purpose. We've been grafted in and now we're the new Israel. Folks, that's a lie. Do not believe that. There's a warning here for us wild olive branches that are grafted into this olive tree that we should not boast against them because how can we know that we might be broken off as well? That's pretty scary. What's he speaking of? He's speaking of pride. The people and the, and the children of Israel and ancient Israel, they had pride. They believed because they were born, naturally born children in Israel, naturally born children of Abraham, that they were already saved. And that was not true. Because the prophets came and Jesus came and said that God could even raise up children of Abraham out of these here stones. You don't think for yourself because of your natural born heritage that you will be saved. But we must also think and take this warning as well that we must not boast against those who are broken off, that we should not allow pride. And do not forget this, as he says in Romans chapter 11, that the branch does not support the root, but the root supports the branches. We have a great deal to be thankful for and even thank Israel today and thank the leaders in the past, regardless of how they believe, but at least they guarded the truth. And now we have the truth, thank God. Amen? Amen. We have a lot to be thankful for. Now, once we have the knowledge, here's your responsibility. Once you have heard, you must do something with that knowledge. It must not lie dormant in your heart. You must not say, well, I heard the message and that's good enough. I've got saved and that's good enough. We talked about Wednesday night even that salvation itself, growing the church and being built up is not just about heaven and hell. That's a major issue. But it's not just about that. The responsibility we find in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You see, the knowledge that we're talking about right now is a good knowledge. It brings us closer to God. But there is a wrong kind of knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, Paul charges these people in, 1 Corinthians, in the Corinthian church. In this chapter, as we read, he charges them that the knowledge they had, they're using it wrongfully. They're using it to boast over the ones who didn't have the knowledge. The ones who were weaker at that point where they were talking about meat offered to idols and they were telling them how silly they were because they did not have the faith and the knowledge that the ones who had the great knowledge had and they were boasting over them instead of teaching them, instead of tenderly talking to them and showing them they were boasting and they were not teaching. You see, there's many people, I believe, even in the church who have a lot of knowledge but they want to puff themselves up and let people know how much knowledge they have. And if we're not careful, friends, we get that way and we start talking with a little bit of a condescending attitude down our noses now. Our nose naturally kind of comes up a little bit. Y'all follow me this morning? We kind of get that, you know, I've got all this knowledge now. I may, may or may not have been in the Bible college, but you know, I've got all this learning and I've got all this experience. And we get talking down to people. You know, you just need to get up here with the mature ones, you know. But what did, I mean, our, our, our prime example, the one who had has more knowledge than anyone, how did he treat people without knowledge? I think what he did, he came down to them. Did he not? He came down to them. He came down and he washed the feet. He came down and he ministered to them. He came down and he touched them who were unclean. He came down and he taught them. He got down to their level. Not that he, folks, it's not that he made himself below. It's not that he made himself of nothing. But he did make himself of no reputation. He said the Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. If there was anyone who had 
anyone who had an excuse or a reason to be condescending, it was our Lord and Savior, amen? He came this world, but yet He came down. He said, touch me. Come take hold of me. He said, my, 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 my yoke is easy and my, and my burden is light. Is that not what He said? And those of you who have knowledge of the Scriptures, those of you that have been studying the Word of God and have all this knowledge that you, you think you can possess, know this. You're responsible for that knowledge that you have. Every one of you. You're responsible to use it. You're responsible not to lord it over people or keep it from people. You're responsible to share. You're responsible to give. Even in this, the knowledge you have has been given to you freely by our Lord. For if God wanted to, could He not shut up heaven and remove it, hold it from you? Yes, He could. So what you have is been given. Don't boast. Don't boast. You see, boast that you know God. And that's it. Amen. The challenge or the charge, the warning to those who have knowledge. Be careful with what you have. Now, there's a proper way to gain knowledge and to use knowledge. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7 says this. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness and to, or to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness above. This is how we to properly handle knowledge, properly handle our faith. We don't add to what God has done, but once we have faith, we're to start adding things into our life. We're to go get them. Study, pray, fellowship, all of those things are very important parts of our life. It helps to make a person or a believer someone who won't stumble. <laughs> continue reading in first or second Peter. Continue reading those verses that said if you do not lack in these things, you will not be unfruitful in this knowledge that you have. Now folks, we need to be fruitful. Amen. <coughs> now, in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge the fools despise wisdom and instruction. I've got a question for you. What comes first? Mom and dad? Religious leaders? What comes first? Discipline? Or instruction? You know. What comes first? Discipline or instruction? I've heard people say a lot, I split my kids every day whether they do it or not. I give a whip every day when they wake up just for I know what the things they're going to do. Send <laughs> so me pray something. Yeah, that's me. You know, I'm just going to get them right now before I know they're going to do something bad, so I'm going to take care of it now. Amen? But really, Paul said that from Adam to Moses, sin was in the world. And how we know from Adam to Moses, sin was in the world, it said death reigned. And so we are told that these people sinned and continued sinning because death reigned from Adam to Moses. All right. Oh, well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, before before Moses came, before the Mosaic Law came, there was no instruction. It says in Romans chapter five, verses twelve through fourteen, but. He says he would, from Romans chapter 14, right? Romans chapter 5, 12 to 14, to start this over again. Sin was in the world, but then in Romans chapter 7, to get my notes right here, Romans chapter 7, he said, I would not have known sin, except for the law had given him knowledge of sin. Now back in Romans chapter 5, it says where there was no law, there was no ability to impute their discipline on those who sin.
And so you might say, well, how do we know these people? Where are they at? What happened to them? The Bible says they continue sinning. You can read that in the first John. These people continue sinning because death reigned. But then we now, as Paul says, Romans chapter 7, I now have learned of sin because the law taught me that I'm a sinner. Our sin nature must first be dealt with. And so you give instruction, parents, religious leaders, pastors, you give instruction to your kids before you discipline them. Wouldn't it seem silly, Andrew, to discipline your child if you didn't know what was right or wrong? It'd be fair, wouldn't it? He had no knowledge of right or wrong, but yet he's getting his hand smacked. They had no knowledge of right or wrong, but yet they're getting a spanking. They're like, well, what did I do wrong? You know what you did wrong. You've heard that one before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mom and Dad, you know, he's like, what did I do wrong, wrong? You know? I remember getting in trouble for things that my cousins did. But that's just, that just part of the game back then, because all of us were in something. Yeah. <laughs> and so, if he was getting in trouble, I, I'm going to tell you something tonight. We have a rule. The tattletales are the first ones to get. Mm -hmm. Parents need to keep that in mind. Little, little Susie, little giant, oh, I'm going to tell on him. That one there needs to be in trouble as much too, because more than likely, they was in on something. We got discipline, but we were told. As you grow up, you're taught by your parents. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there. So before we get disciplined, we get taught. But because of our sin nature, parents, because of our sin nature, you know your kids are going to be wrong. Oh, no. My child will never do that. She is perfect. She's an angel. He is great. I've raised him up in church. I've done all this. They're not going to go do this. They're not going to go do that. Really. We better be careful, little mouth, what we say. Because there's a sin nature in your child, whether you want to believe it or not. 